there's glass here so you can see through glass the glass enables you to see actually see what you're doing it's a nice feature and we'll test her out see what she does she's working if she cocks out so this Jeep is a female apparently <laughs> Alrighty, welcome out. This is a, we're going to be working on a 98 Jeep Cherokee today. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to get, we're going to be trying to get the, the instrument cluster working. So this will, should work for a 07, uh, not 07, 97 to a 2000, pretty sure, Jeep Cherokee. It's about the same. So this, what's been happening, uh, the instrument cluster, the gauges will just stop working while we're driving. I don't know, you hit a bump, and all of a sudden you don't know how fast you're going. Which is not good. You need to know how fast you're going. And also you need to know how much fuel you have. So, that needs to be fixed. So we're going to try to get that fixed so that if we go on a bump, we don't uh, get a speeding ticket accidentally. So, today we'll be showing you how we're going to do that, and we're going to see if it works. Stay tuned. So, we're going to try and firm up these little plugs here with some double-sided tape. And we'll see how that goes. So, wipe away some of the, some of the thirst dirt and dust here Maybe I'll let it overhang a little bit. So give it a little bit more to wedge in there. Okay. Hmm. I should double it up. Slide over this, okay. That's the question. Okay. Oh. And the crowd goes wild. Well, that is definitely more firm. It's got that double sided tape kind of wedged in there. So the next one, I'll just I'll leave. I'll leave the backing. Okay, this one I've already got two stuck together. I left the slick backing there so we can slide it over. And I'll, I'll try. 
try letting it overhang just a bit on this side. Maybe it'll give us extra wedge effect. I'll go back in there. That feels good. It's kind of catching. That's on the back in there, but that's all right. Give us extra holding power. Okay, so they are much more solid in there. Okay, now lining them up. Where's that cluster? So we'll just have to line it up. Get it back in there, huh? Can we go ahead and... Should we go ahead and plug it in? Yep. glass here so you can see through glass <laughs> the glass enables you to see actually see what you're doing it's a nice feature okay all right my trusty cameraman so what's next uh, next we can put it all back together. Should we, um, should we put some screws in these holes here? Yeah, there's some screws that go in there. Maybe drive it and test it? Yeah. See, test it out, see what it does? Sure. Okay. And here's what it looks like from the back. You can see one green plug right there. There's another one right there, those wires. And you want those guys nice and secure. They were flopping around loose. All right. All right, we're gonna get the screws back on here. Then we'll test her out. See what she does. If she's working, if she conks out. See. So this Jeep is a female. Apparently. <laughs> so the problem we were having is the instrument cluster would just stop working all of a sudden. So you wouldn't know how fast you're going. Try explaining that to a police officer. You wouldn't know your what your <laughs> RPMs were. Nothing. And Luke would just uh, give it a a hit on the top, right? And yeah, start we'd working. Yeah, the dashboard and it come and, back to life. And we just read a forum where they were saying that exact same thing. Some guy was doing the same thing. He'd give it a hit on top and it would start yeah. working again. So there's right. uh, a bad contact in there somewhere. Let's see. Well, the gauge is on. There's those wipers I was talking about. Oh, okay. They work. <laughs> okay. Oops. Yeah. Glad so. they do. Well, I'm going to try that little test thing. So here's a little test thing you can do. You hold down the reset button on the cluster and turn your key to on. Keep holding down the, the button and then let go when it starts beeping. 
You'll see all the gauges start moving. There they go. All the lights start blinking. And what this is doing is testing itself, according to what we've read and seen. It's testing itself, making sure it's getting a signal. So if it goes through all that and you don't see anything weird, then it should be working. So does that mean the cluster's good? Yes. And that it's getting a signal or something from the computer, I guess. So, hmm. So, so that's good news. Maybe the I read somewhere that if it comes up, it says no bus. When you do that test, that means it's, uh, I don't remember what that means, but it's not good. If it says no bus? Yeah. You try doing that test and those gauges don't start moving and stuff. It just says no bus, probably on this screen right here. Hmm. Okay. All right. So next yeah. we're going to drive it, right? Yep. We'll see okay. See you Start this boy up. Sometimes it just cranks fine. Okay, so voltage meter is working, fuel level. Is there supposed to be oil pressure? Yeah, there should be some. That's not working. Does it? Did it used to work? I don't know. I don't recall. I don't remember. So either that's I don't think... broken or something. Right. Hmm. I don't know. Well, let's back out. Building up fumes in here. Alrighty, so the next step is to get all this, all these pieces put back together on the dash. We've got the top part of the dash, we've got the instrument cluster bezel, I believe it's called, whatever. We've got the part that goes where your knees go underneath the steering column, and the bezel that goes over your radio and, um, I forget what it's called, but yeah, we gotta get all that stuff put back so it looks nice and complete in there. So that's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna start off with the big top piece that goes on top of the dash. This just slides in and then snaps in. So you'll kind of slide it in towards the front of the vehicle and then push it down. So I'm gonna show you that now. piece is the bezel thingy that goes over the steering column comes in here the instrument cluster is going to be right here and then over here is where like a radio and stuff is so this one is not just snap in this one uh, first it will snap in but then there's screws so you've got one screw right here one screw down here Another screw over here, and another one down here. So you snap it in, this rubber piece goes around the steering column, and you can see it kind of connects, kind of slides together, and you'll connect that underneath the steering column. So, and then once you have it all snapped in and stuff, you screw it in 
and then we can move on to the next piece. So let's get this put in. One other thing you're going to want to do when you're getting this bezel back in is you're going to take off this metal piece here. And so it's just held on with a screw up here and over here. So you take those two screws out. This thing's come. This thing's. This thing comes down. Can't talk right now. And then you should be able to get this back in. And one other thing, this light switch is going to go through this hole. You just shove it through. And it is a little tricky. You don't. And you want to be careful. You don't want to break it. But uh, once you do that, you get this metal piece off. Get this back in. You proceed with the leather. Screw it in and everything. Okay, so as I was trying to get this thing back in, I realized this little thing has to go through this hole. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't realize how hard that was going to be. So, little trick I found. See if it works for you guys, whoever watches this video. If you try to move this bezel, kind of angle it like that so the hole gets under and then try to pop the top over that got it in because I was sitting here for what seemed like a long time pushing on it with all my pushing on it with full strength and I couldn't do anything, it wouldn't budge so yeah if you ever have to do this try that try wedging one side under and then popping the rest over and hopefully that works Learn from learn from my mistake if you can, please. On to the next piece. Okay, so the next thing to go back on is the parts that go right by your knees underneath the steering column. This obviously goes on first. The two screws. Uh, well, there's two holes on each side, but there was only one screw on each side in mine. So you get those screwed in. You just gotta look for the holes. And then this goes over it. The top, you can see here, the two tabs up at the top, they just snap in. And then on the bottom, there's three screws. One right there, one right there, and one right in the middle of those three. So you snap it in, screw it in, and that's all good. And don't forget to, the little rubber thing on the bottom of the, the other bezel that we just put on, make sure you connect that together before you put this stuff on. And then... Screw on it. Alright, now it's time for the final piece, the main bezel that goes over your radio and uh Get what they're called temperature control things and then some other stuff down here this is just a bunch of tabs one two three four five six just snaps in there and uh, when you're taking all this stuff off you this is the first thing that comes off whenever you're trying to get to the instrument cluster so whenever when this is on if you want to take it off all you do is grab them down here and just give it a nice tug, and the bottom will pop right out. Then just takes a good bit of manhandling, and the rest of it will come right out. So, I'm going to put this in. Just snaps right in, no screws, no nothing. And uh, then we'll be done. This is the last piece. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to put this piece in, make sure you put the shifter all the way back. Because you can see, this has got to go right there over all that stuff. So if you're trying to slide it down in here, you're, there's very little space right here. 
you've got the shifter right in the way. So make sure you pull all that all the way back, and then you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. And, uh, yeah. Don't, don't, just make life, make life easier for yourself. Work smarter, not harder. several times now, several weeks, test it out, drive it, banging on the dash, trying to get the cluster to stop working, gauges to, and uh, it's it's been good, seems like it's been fixed, seems like that fixed it, I hope that helps you guys, uh, I can tell how fast I'm going now, that's very good, I can tell how many uh, tachometer, how many RPMs, and how much fuel I have, so I know how I, I can avoid a ticket and I can get to where I'm going. So that's that's the important part. Um, I was a little worried at first that my uh, oil pressure gauge wasn't working, but uh, it turns out that's not that wasn't the cluster. And uh, maybe you saw in the video that the oil pressure gauge was way low. That's not the cluster. That's some other thing. Just in case you were wondering. So, that has nothing to do with the cluster. It looks like it's fixed. So, I'm really excited. It was my dad's idea, mostly. Well, not mostly. All of it was his idea. He used that double-sided tape, wedging the, wedging the double-sided tape behind the plugs to hold them in place. So, I hope that helps you if you're having that problem. And, uh, thanks for watching.